The Eurovision Song Contest, A Story of Fire Saga, is a movie brought to us by David Dumpkin, who did Shanghai Nights. Ugh. But other good movies, what kind of good movies? The Judge I thought was pretty decent with Robert Downey Jr. It was a bit cliche and a little bit too eh, but not bad at all. And of course, um, The Wedding Crashes, which was a great flick. Now we have a movie with Will Ferrell. We are a joke. Oh, this is going to be hit or miss. Will Ferrell is a kind of like a 40-60 guy, 40% lands right, 60% not, not at all, really. Maybe that's being very generous. I am Lars, this is Secret, we are Fire Saga. Anchorman 2 wasn't too bad, I suppose. Anchorman 1 was quite great. Step Brothers, we don't even want to talk about that. So yeah, this movie was going to be either great or terrible. Wow. And then I heard it had Rachel McAdams in it. I think she's great. I love her as an actress. I think she's been in some really lovely roles. She's used a quirky, kind of cute person. Um, I saw her in last year's um, Game Night, which was a blast. It's on Amazon right now. And yeah, so I thought, okay, cool. That's not bad. They're not bad. And then I heard it had Dan Stevens. And anybody who knows me knows I, I have a massive man crush on him. <laughs> Stop laughing. I'm trying to fight you. <laughs> um, so I thought, okay, cool. That's three, two. Um, really good people, um, two good, great actors in this, and I thought, okay, what could go wrong? Um, so yeah, okay, then I found out the movie was two hours and four minutes long. I was like, Jesus Christ, what is this, like Marvel's Avengers kind of thing? Or Lord of the Rings? That's a long, long screen time for a comedy, and this is what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a comedy. Um, what is it about? Well, we start off with a kind of song uh, between Rachel McAdam and um, our f friend Will, and they are basically playing two people from Iceland who really want to be in the Re Eurovision Song Contest. There's a little bit of backstory thrown in there by jumping back in time to see him as a young child crying because his mother has passed, and um, Abba comes on the TV and he runs out and starts dancing to Abba, and um, everyone starts laughing at him and he screams at him and says, I will be in the Eurovision Song Contest, don't you laugh at me! Meanwhile, while he's, as a young child, saying this to a room full of people, including Pierce Brosnan, who's supposed to be his father, um, in the back, back room is um, Rachel's character. Um, I, I keep forgetting the names because they're really weird. Well, not weird, but they're not really used. I don't use them very often. So Wilfred plays Lars Eriksson, because it's a song, you know? <laughs> And then we have Rachel McAdams playing Surgit Eric Stodier. I don't know, it's got a couple of hyphen things above the O. And um, yeah, so the, she, she's sitting in another, another room and apparently she can't speak, um, or at least she decided not to talk as a child. And then the music comes on and he, um, Will Ferrell's character, Eric um, Song, uh, Lars Eric Song, manages to get her to talk. You, you hear about this while she's talking to her mother in a sort of flashback. Anyway, we go forward 30 years later. They are middle-aged. Um, basically, we've got um, Lars, who is a... Traffic officer, I suppose. He gives people tickets and people shout to him and say, I'm not going to pay the ticket. Ha! Ah. And she... What is... What is... Um, I don't know what she does. What is her surrogate? I don't know what she does. I think she's a teacher. That's right. Sorry, she's a teacher. Anyway, so that's the sort of story of it. And they want to basically go into the Eurovision Song Contest. They um, accidentally end up going when something tragic happens. I'm going to give spoilers in this because it's a review that just needs to be said. A boat blows up basically because full of all the contestants who would have been going to the Eurovision Song Contest, they all die except for, you know, Eric. Sorry, not Eric. I keep saying Eric. It's not Eric's song, it's Lars, for fuck's sake. Except for Lars um, and Surrogate. So they end up going instead because of haphazard chance or whatever the hell. You find out why the boat blew up because apparently one of the fucking political. I think it's the mayor. The mayor doesn't want them to win because next year that means a half a million people will descend on Iceland and they can't afford to have that many people in Iceland. Okay. Ironically, actually, when it was filmed in Iceland, this movie, um, apparently the, the budget was about three and a half million dollars and the, um, the local government had to <laughs> cough up a million to actually um, sort of subsidize them because they have got some sort of tax thing. You know, Canada has one of these very cat tax things too. So ironically, that actually did happen, as in they spent a lot of money to have the movie filmed there. Um, then we jump through to London. I think it's, um, where are we in London? Is Glasgow, Edinburgh? I don't know. It's funny. It's quite funny because... Um, if you win the Eurovision Song Contest, the next year you're hosting it, and England <laughs> was apparently hosting it, and it's implying that the year before they had won. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen anytime soon. Anyway, it's quite funny as well that this movie takes place now. You can see why they made it. They made it because they knew that they would ride the waves of the Eurovision Song Contest. What they didn't anticipate, of course, was COVID, and of course that closed down the entire Eurovision Song Contest, which didn't take place. So the movie went, away, went ahead anyway, and um, yeah, a lot of tears, a lot of tears. My gods, a lot. Tears. So why is the movie bad? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. Let's go for the nice things first. You know, it's nice to talk about nice things and stuff. So in this, um, what's nice about it? Um, the scenery is pretty nice, because Iceland is quite a, photogenic. Um, there's a scene that has whales leaping out of the water. That is so obviously CGI'd in there, you want to cry. Um, what else? 
jumpers we'll probably get back to in a minute as well. We also have... Okay, the, Euro the Eurovision Song Contest, um, if anybody follows it, I don't, I never have. I, I don't really give a shit about this kind of stuff. Though, uh, they have a lot of the, the winners from previous um, competitions are in this movie. They have a thing called a song along or ride, a song a ride. I don't know, it's kind of like they all sing in the house and the camera pans from one famous person to another famous singer to another famous singer, all of whom I've never seen before in my life. And um, that's quite nice. I thought that was done quite nicely. Very much like Mamma Mia um, thrown in there. And if they'd done that more, throughout this movie. I think it would have been much better if they'd made it into a musical. Um, they don't. They did write quite a few original songs um, for the movie, which is quite nice. And Rachel McAdams actually sings um, a song at the very end of this. That's actually his, her voice. The rest of the time she starts singing the song and then they merge her song or they mix her voice, sorry, with another um, um, voice act, I suppose, proper musician, I suppose. Um, same with Wolf Ferrell. He doesn't really sing much in this, to be honest with you. Um, didn't expect that. And they did the same thing with Dan, Dan Stevens, but I'll get to him in a minute. Actually, no, I'll get to him now, because that's a good thing about this. So yes, anyway, the Eurovision Song Contest, the, 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 the spectacle is quite magnificent in this. You've got um, Norton, um, Richard Norton, uh, Richard Norton, Graham Norton, um, who is acting as Graham Norton, because he's one of the um, sort of commentators on the show. And you also have, as I said, Pierce Brosnan, who doesn't really do much in this, except for going, oh, I'm disappointed in you. Um, and then we get to Dan Stevens, and he's brilliant in this. He plays a Russian Alexander Sov something, I don't know, um, guy who walks around with his chest bare the whole time, apparently. Um, um, he said that he had to do a whole bunch of push-ups push and get prepared for the role. Prepared for the role by basically just having a decent body, I suppose. Um, and he is having fun in this. You can see that he got the script and went, Jesus Christ, this is trash. I mean, it's bad. But I like the idea of this role because it's a fun role. He kind of plays a bad guy in this. As I said, Alexandra. He is a Russian singer. Um, he seems to have a lot of money behind him. And he has mansions, and you walk in, they, they go to his mansion, and um, you walk in, and there's like these eight foot statues of um, Dan Stevens, kind of look like da Richard, you know, David's, and um, this penis hanging from him, and they're all made to look at, like their character, uh, who, who pretends he doesn't even realize that that's, like, they're modeled on him. Anyway, as I say, you can see that Dan Stevens had a blast in this. Um, he sings an amazing song called R Lion Call or Lion Wild, I don't know. Um, but there's this underlying sort of theme that the, he's a gay character. Um, in fact, towards the end, he's approached by a surrogate and she actually says to him, are you gay? And he's like, no, Mother Russia does not produce gay people. It's impossible. Um, which I thought was a little on the nose. I mean, I get the idea it's having a dig at Russia, but this is a movie that's landing during Pride Week and that kind of thing would be a little bit like... Uh, anyway, I thought it maybe I'm being oversensitive because the movie was trash up until that point and carried on kind of being trash. Anyway, so that's Dan Stevens. He was good in it. Um, what else was good in it? Yeah, let's move on to the bad things. I think if I was from Iceland, I would be furious with this movie. I get irritated when I see the iterations of South Africans. For example, we are very stereotyped as being racist um, vigilantes or mercenaries. Um, actually, I'm playing um, Uncharted 4 right now, and all of them are, of course, South African mercenaries. That's because one of the lead bads, I suppose, is from Zimbabwe. Anyway, so yeah, if you are a person who doesn't like that kind of cliche, I think it's lazy writing. They do this very much with um, the Iceland culture. Firstly, you've got elves in this, um, the main character. Um, he doesn't believe in elves, of course. Lars is like, don't be stupid, elves are not real. But then later in the actual movie, an elf kills a human with a knife being thrown into his back. So there's a murder. Doesn't matter because this movie makes no fucking sense whatsoever anyway, and it's ignored. So yes, elves in this. Um, all the people in Iceland walk around in big woolly jumpers because, you know, it's cold in Iceland. You've got to wear woolly jumpers to keep warm. And they drink lots of beer because Vikings. And if Vikings are dropped in there all the time. Uh, Pierce Brosnan apparently has sired so many kids in his little village, he doesn't know who's or his and who, who's aren't. Also, the only thing that people do there seem to be is uh, fishing, which is the most cliche thing you can, I suppose you could say. They, they make the characters also extremely simple. At first, it was a little bit like my stepbrother, you know, that sort of crazy, not crazy, it's not even crazy. It's, it's the simple people, or, or not dumb people, but just very simple people. As in, they don't understand any social customs that most people would. For example, um, Sir gets in this, she, she goes into this big party with Dan Stevens' character, Alexandra, and he, he hands, he brings two glasses of champagne and she grabs both of them because, you know, people in Iceland, they don't know how to toast, not like real people do. Yeah. And what else? Um, oh, apparently people, everyone in Iceland is incestuous. I think the joke was dropped five or six times in the movie. And I thought to myself, maybe I missed something in the actual beginning. And then I was like talking to other friends who'd seen this and, and, and my mom. And it was like, no, there was no implication, implication that they were brothers or stepbrothers or stepsisters. Because I thought maybe because the father had so many kids, maybe that's why they were joking about it. But the father line was only delivered later on. And it was so unceremoniously dished out 
that you would have missed it if you blinked. So apparently they're all incestuous there because small village, lots of volcano. Fuck, I have no idea. But I would be pretty offended with this um, if I was from Iceland. Secondly, also the characters just have no motivations. Um, you know, you've got this bloody, <laughs> this Lark's Eric song. He's also simple and just is an absolute arsehole to be honest with you. He's not even a likable character and he's supposed to be the lead. And um, he has an issue with Americans. Now you would expect some backstory to that. I mean, he literally swears at Americans and tells them to fuck off to Starbucks and stuff. And at the very end of the movie, it comes up again and it just goes on and on. And you're sitting here cringing. I mean, yes, a lot of shit's going on in America right now and major issues up there in politics. But he's just swearing at these kids. Like, get the, go back to America from, from Europe, you fucking Americans. Like, he doesn't quite say fucking Americans. I think they dropped the F-bomb a couple of times towards the end, but it's kind of a PG-13 um, in this. And... Like I said, there's no reason for it, except for the fact that he probably sat down with his writer, I forget the other writer's name, and, um, and Will Ferrell was like, that sounds funny. Everyone loves hating on Americans right now. Put that in there, because it'll get a good laugh. Didn't. Didn't get much of a laugh at all. And that's what I'm getting so irritated about with these, with, with these movies, is that Will Ferrell can make good movies. And um, this has been in the, in the works for a long time. So it's like no one sat down with him and went over the script and said, look, dude, firstly, editor. God, the editing is fucking terrible in this, too. Um, maybe it was thrown together at the last minute, but there's actual scenes in this. There's one scene where um, you've got um, Lars talking to his father, played by Pierce Brosnan, on a boat, and then the camera goes back behind Pierce Brosnan, and you can see that what he's saying about his mouth, I mean, not directly looking at his lips because the camera's kind of here, but you can see by the way the jaw is moving and what's actually being heard are not on the same page. They are not being said. So I don't know what happened there. They must have cut something out and then put something back in and thought, okay, just hide him with a back angle. But I'm like, wow, that really stood out for me. And it was pretty on the nose as to how poorly that shot was put together. And it goes throughout the entire movie. The entire thing has pretty lazy shots put all together. Except for, like I say, the, the Eurovision song context, the, the song context itself, which is a massive spectacle. I don't know whether it was done by CGI, which would have been surprising because the rest of the CGI is pretty shit. But it was a big, big spectacle. So yeah, this is a movie that you don't need to really waste your time on. There are far better musicals out there. I'd rather go watch Mamma Mia 2, and that is bad, um, than watch this again. It is very long, as I said to you. They could have trimmed this and trimmed it and trimmed it, left everything with Dan Stevens and his nutcase um, character in, and stripped out most of Will Ferrell's character because he's just annoying. And even, even Rachel um, McAdams, she is usually charming and lovely, but in this she's, anno she's annoying. She's a bit irritating. Um, but she does have an amazing voice, if it's to be believed what I've read, um, that she sings at the very end. So yes, I would give this, and it's a harsh, harsh one, a 5 out of 10. It is not a movie that you need to see unless you're really, really desperate for things. And interestingly, I think some people will like this kind of movie. If you like Will Barrow Bad Will Ferrell movies, you might like this. Because I was chatting with someone on Twitter, and he seemed to think it was quite good. Um, and that the poking fun of the of us as, as, as people was a sort of like with them to, to me it was quite the opposite but you know different tastes different strokes different folks anyway guys hope you enjoyed the review and yeah maybe watch something else catch you later